in a book of the 1960s. I found this circuit. It's a multi vibrator, but the good thing of it all is that it can go to very high frequencies. At least that was say told in that book and I've tested it and it really works. Though there is a lot to tell. Here the circuit again. <laughs> um, they tell in the book that the frequency differs according to the uh, negative and the positive value. So in fact it's a voltage controlled oscillator. And I found that it can go to say uh, 53 mega cycles and even higher. So let's look somewhat closer. Uh, it is a circuit that is not very stable, I think. Anyway, the waveform is not perfect, but you can uh, sometimes use such a very, very coarse oscillator in radio um, tests, etc. So this is the whole circuit and when we vary the voltage here, the positive opposite to zero and vary the voltage here, neg negative opposite to zero, here is the zero, the frequency changes very very substantially. And I at first made a test circuit on such a test board but that did not work. Uh, I saw say frequencies of 70 mega cycles or so that had everything to do with stray capacitance, long wiring etc. So I had to make it in this way and you can see it here and that's also <coughs> say the best way to make it. The whole circuit must be shielded in tin plate or steel. Uh, the say uh, switch with one motor contact and six uh, other contacts must be here also in that tin plate box. And I had to say find out completely all the different capacitor values to make it work in a good way. And then I mean that there, there was no overlap in the frequency bands. Here the power supply consists of a very simple transformer. It has two 12 volts windings on the secondary side. And here, here I've used a doubler, voltage doubler. You can see that at the diodes. And that means that we have here uh, a positive voltage of 46 volts. That's very high. Anyway, the circuit needed approximately 30 volts and we have a negative voltage of 22 volts. That's here. So when you want to make it, uh, I wish you a lot of luck. Um, it took quite a long time uh, to get it more or less stable and now it's in the final stage. But still not uh, very much elaborated. In a kind of primitive stage, but I want to show it because um, it's an interesting circuit, I think. Here the one k, uh, sorry, the 10k uh, potentiometer that sets the negative voltage. Here the 10k potentiometer that sets the positive voltage. And I've by purpose chosen here um, to say give that negative voltage a more or less fixed value and a positive voltage that is going to change. That gives a frequency deviation. And well let's look at the circuit. Uh, it's now on position 1 and position 1 means 
Um, that we have a capacitor of 100 nanofarad. And CX is the capacitor that tells um, tells it all. It's it decisive for the for the output frequency. Not only, by the way, the most important um, uh, property to get different output frequencies are the positive and the negative voltages. Anyway, 100 nanofarad, and here you see the whole bunch of all the uh, frequency ranges that can be um, found with this circuit. Here it is on the lowest, uh, the highest value capacitor. Let's look. I told that the, uh, the waveform is not very pure, and that's surely the case. But it is useful. And we are now on 8.2 megahertz, megacycles. Very strange, by the way, that you can get to 8.2 megacycles with a capacitor of 100 nanofarad. But the key is in the changing voltages on this multivibrator. So I tune out the frequency somewhat. And we go to 16 megacycles. Go to the second capacitor. That's 470 picofarad. And it's very strange that such a big difference between the first setting of the um, capacitor and the second setting has such a big effect. That has everything to do with the setup where um, where the voltages um, define the frequency. Anyway, another cap, the next cap, 25 mega cycles, 29 mega cycles, and uh, 30. Three and the final capacitor, <coughs> the smallest capacitor that makes this circuit to go to uh, 54 megacycles and a very good sine wave. That's also very strange when I, uh, we go to higher frequencies. Uh, the waveform changes substantially. I have perhaps to do somewhat more study regarding that issue, because this is of course perfect <coughs> for all kinds of, of uh, radio purposes. Anyway, um, let's go back, switch back. Here the waveform is not so pure, you can surely see that. 29, also the waveform is not so pure, but you can align that waveform somewhat. And here it gets worse in a certain way, of course. More worse. And this is the, say, the highest value capacitor going to the <coughs> lowest frequencies that this circuit can make. This is of course not very perfect, but anyway, could be a useful waveform because it's sine wave like. So you don't have, say, um, all kinds of other frequencies, and then I mean harmonics. The reason that it is sine wave like, anyway. So um, here, how I made it. In real, this is the the, the the central switch, the motor contact, and here are all these different capacitors giving out different frequencies. 
pink connections. Here we set the frequency with that potentiometer that's here. 10k. It has on one electrode a 1k resistor to zero. That's the mass, the minus, the shielding. And here is uh, that other potentiometer, the negative potentiometer, that's here. And I have by purpose chosen this type of potentiometer because you can set it very, very precise. And let's show what happens when we turn that potentiometer a little bit on the way effect on the waveform. Frequency changes. Everything to do with the setup of this circuit. Again, I have to do the screwdriver. So these are the changes when you change the negative voltage to that multivibrator. You can see that it gets to other frequencies. It has everything to do with the electronic setup. But there is, a, uh, say, a position where that negative voltage uh, has to be set to make the whole circuit uh, work properly on all these different frequencies. And that's easy to 